Hello and welcome back to another faction guide. Today I'm extremely excited to be talking about Spain. This is one of my favorite factions just because I've got a soft spot for it. We've been playing the very hard campaign. We're on part 12. Um, so I kind of feel like an expert on this. I want to give you some tips for how to play the campaign, um, fix the economy, grow, just general tactics. Um, we'll also talk about some more exploity tactics. I'll show you how to start the game with like 20 regions and a huge economy. Just, you know, not everyone wants to use those exploits, but I like to show you them because I think games should be fun. Um, so I'll go over that and then talk about the army composition and how to use it best. And then uh, hopefully you'll be ready to absolutely smash the Spanish campaign the next time you play as it. This is a faction that you need to go into the files to change the status of it as playable. It's not intended and it's very much not intended. <laughs> it's one of the least fleshed out campaigns You'll see that. But if you want to play it, there are tutorials all over YouTube for how to go into the game files and change the status from non-playable to playable. And I definitely recommend it. It's a fun challenge. Nothing like a Roman faction. Just, yeah, try it. It's a really hard campaign. It's really fun. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. And I'll kind of talk about the starting position and the economy. So this is the starting position of Spain. You start with four cities, Asturica, Scalabus, Carthago Nova, and Osca. And they're all pretty underdeveloped. You start with a population of 8,200, which is pretty low, and you start with a starting purse of 3,000 denarii, which is joint worst in the game. And it doesn't get much better for the economy after that, because right off the bat, you're not making much money at all. It says you're going to make 1,082 denarii, but it does not go far, because if you're going to purchase anything, you're going to completely drain your purse. You're going to have huge issues with the economy in the early game. As far as starting army, you have four generals, three scutarii, four town militia, seven skirmishers, and five round shield cavalry. This is okay, um, but they're so spread out across Spain, the peninsula, that you can't really use them very effectively. And the four town militia, the seven skirmishers, they're not very good. You're not really going to use them in battle. They're just kind of a garrison. So you really do not have a good starting army at all. I would honestly recommend disbanding the town militia just because they're so horrible <laughs> or even the skirmishers um, but you can kind of piece together two decent armies you take the armies from Asturica and Scalabus and the armies from Carthago Nova and Olska you can kind of get a decent army together and hopefully take on the Gauls and the Carthaginians. Speaking of I wanted to turn off Fog of War real quick to kind of talk about your neighbors um, so you have Mancia here with six units. It's a decent garrison, but not that great. And in Cordoba, they have seven units, which is actually pretty tough. So you're going to struggle somewhat with Cordoba. Uh, make sure you bring your best units for that. But I also wanted to talk about your starting generals. They're pretty decent. Honestly, as Spain, you have, uh, this is probably your best. Horanius, he has lively, intelligent, he has bodyguard. So, you know, good, good stats overall. And then your other General Matagenus has bloody and armor, so that's plus two morale off the rip, which is pretty great for a starting general. But all of them are decent. Um, they just forgot to give you bad traits. But something to be aware of with your generals is you can ruin them really easy if you train taverns. These give you horrible traits as Spain. You get drunken traits, which decrease your influence and management. You pick up Slubber Degolian, which is a retinue which makes you easier to assassinate, easier to bribe, I believe, and brings down your influence. This will just ruin your generals. So really avoid training taverns unless you need them to manage public order. Or maybe in the late game, once you've left these settlements without generals, you can build whatever you want here because you're not going to ruin your generals if there's not a general there to ruin. You have mines in Asturica and Carthago Nova, which can give you 200 per turn each. This is definitely worth investing in as early as possible. They cost uh, 1,900 denarii, which, you know, that's definitely worth it. It pays for itself in 10 turns. And then a huge part of your economy is Spain because you don't really have many other prospects. So I definitely recommend building those. Let's take a look at the building browser. So Spain only gets three levels of cities, town, large town, and minor city. And it's pretty grim. Um, starting from the top, we have three levels of barracks. The first level is just town militia, horrible. The second level is Iberian infantry, horrible. Third level is Scutarii. We'll talk about them later, but they're pretty decent, honestly. Um, they're comparable to something like... They're probably a little bit better than Principes. Um, so, you know, they're good. 
We'll talk about them later. Um, but yeah, you need to get up to a level three city, Hall of Heroes, to be able to train those, which is just so frustrating. At a large town, you can build stables for round shield cavalry. And at a minor city, you can build warlord stables for long shield cavalry. At a large town, you can build a practice range for skirmishers and an archery range at minor city for slingers. These aren't great. We'll talk more about them later. You get, obviously, traders. You can get a level 2 smith. Shipwright is your highest level of port, so you can get large boats, which will be really important to the strategy for how you play as Spain. We'll talk about that in a sec. The infrastructure is really lacking as Spain. You can only get level 2 farms, and only level 1 roads, which makes traversing the Spanish peninsula so annoying because there are so many mountains and forests and enemies, and it will take you literally eight turns to get from Carthago Nova to Asturica if there is not an enemy around Numantia, which there will be. So it will take you up to 10 turns to get from one settlement to another on just this tiny peninsula. So annoying. We talked about taverns. They're okay for happiness, but really bad for your generals. But let's talk about temples next. So first off, we have the Shrine to Epona, which apparently goes up to level five with plus five experience to your troops. This is actually a lie. You can't even build this. And if you try to build this, it breaks your game, causes crashes in the late game. So in my campaign, I just destroyed them and switched to other temples because you can't use these. The next one I didn't really use was the Sacred Circle of Tutidus. This gives you public order bonus due to happiness a little bit. Light weapons plus one, experience to troops plus two. It's just not that good. There are better options, so I didn't really use this at all. Next up, we have the Shrine of Abnoba, which at its highest level gives you missile weapons plus three and happiness bonus 15%. This is really good. You don't want it in all of your cities, but you probably do want one or two of them. Maybe on your offensive front line where you're doing all your fighting, you can build one of these and just retrain all your missiles. It will be a huge advantage for you. And finally, the Circle of Isis. This is the core of the army as Spain. Um, we'll talk about the army breakdown later, but you only get really eight units you can train that are decent. And two of them come from the Circle of Isis. You have public order bonus due to happiness and law of 15%, which is great. It helps with public order and helps to bring down the cost of corruption because you have that law bonus. But also the main thing about the Sacred Circle of Isis and the reason you're going to want to train this in almost every city is that you can train Naked Fanatics and Bull Warriors. So Naked Fanatics are at level 2. They're decent but have no armor. And Bull Warriors at level 3. These are amazing. We'll talk about them later. And that's all of the buildings that you can build as Spain. So let's kind of talk about general strategies here, how you should play your campaign, especially on high difficulties. So you want to pull these four armies and take out Numantia and Cordoba. Um, however you want to do it, if you want to do one at a time, that's fine. Um, I did both kind of separately at the same time. Um, but yeah, you want to knock these out because you need to unify all of Spain. And then I would recommend building a bunch of watchtowers on Spain because it's so dark. There's so many mountains and forests that you just won't even know if enemies have landed and are about to take one of your cities off of you. You need to not be leaving a garrison every city. So I would definitely put up watchtowers just so you know what's going on so you can afford to only have one strong army on Spain. And another note about watchtowers is that you want to make sure you don't lay them directly on the trade routes, the roads between your settlements, because rebels will tend to spawn and walk over to watchtowers because they like sitting on them to blockade them. Um, but that also means that they will blockade your road if you place the watchtower on a road. So if you have a road here, for example, just place the watchtower off to the side. So they kind of get distracted over there and they don't block trade. It'll do great things for your economy. And once you lay a watchtower, you can't do anything about it. So I made this mistake in my campaign and I was dealing with rebels the whole game. So yeah, heed my warning. And that one strong army, once you've taken these six settlements for yourself, I place right outside of Oska guarding this mountain pass because the majority of enemies that you're going to face attacking your homeland are going to be coming through this mountain pass. They're going to be Gauls. So I just put one strong army here, just whatever I can afford. And this is my defensive force. And then I use these settlements down here, which have good population, Carthago Nova and Cordoba. And I train up armies to send off on fleets and go island hopping, picking up different settlements. So let's talk about some important settlements. First off, Tingi. This is hugely important in the mid game. It'll be worth at least 4,000 denarii a turn in trade. So just pick this up as soon as possible. I know it'll anger the Numidians, but 
It's so important to get trade between Cordoba and Chingi. This will be worth a ton of money to you. Next up is Palma. This will end up being a great capital location for you once you've expanded into other parts of the Mediterranean because it's close to North Africa, close to Spain, it's close to Gaul, and it's close to Italy. So Palma will probably be your capital for most of the game. And you can also buy Balearic Slingers here um, on the shore here. So that's amazing. It's going to end up being a huge part of your army, which we'll talk about later. But Palma is very strategically important. Now, the main strategy as Spain for me when I played the very hard campaign was to have an armada in the Mediterranean Sea here because I found that the Romans would send full stack armies like every three turns and they just send a full stack army on like one Byrene. So if you have a navy here and you can sink that Byrene with the army on it, this will slow down their growth so much. In my campaign, it took me like eight hours to get to Italy. But by then, the Julii had not even expanded beyond Segesta. They had three settlements. We took them, knocked them out of the game, and it was amazing. So, uh, I mean, that won't happen in every game, I'm sure. But uh, have, a, have a navy here, because otherwise they're going to land on Oska, and you're going to lose Oska, and you're going to have huge issues, because you cannot beat Romans in the field. Best to beat them on the open seas, where you have the advantage. Yeah, generally, the strategy for Spain, consolidate Spain, Get watchtowers up, get one army in the north, then start island hopping with your armada. Totally dominate the sea, kick out any Carthaginian and Roman fleets. Take Palma, then take Carolus, maybe take Sicily or take Carthage. I went up and I took Italy pretty early, which is really smart because you're going to struggle to deal with post-Marian armies of the Romans. Um, I think that's a great idea. Makes the game a little less interesting once you've taken the Romans out of the game, but if you want to win, you got to do it. So I definitely recommend that. Another thing to note is that Narbomardius is a very profitable city to own. It has mines, for example. It's good for trade. But once you push north of this mountain range, you lose the protective force of it. And it opens you up to being attacked by other people. So it's common for Germanians to come down and take Logdunum and have armies over here. And if they declare war on you, you're going to be dealing with not just being at war with Gaul and Carthage and Numidia and the Romans, but also the Germanians or maybe the Britannians if they come south. I managed to take all of Italy and have a whole empire going before I ever once saw anyone from Germania or Britain. So I kind of recommend you don't push north to Narbomardius until you have a stable economy and strong armies. You're ready to do it. But if you're ambitious, you could try it. You know, have fun. <laughs> so next up, I do want to give you kind of the exploity way to start this campaign, as I always do. If you want to not start with this tiny poor economy and instead start with a huge booming economy in 20 regions. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and disband our starting armies in all four settlements. And then we're going to build a diplomat in Scalabus because we're going to need a second one. And in Carthago Nova, we will need to bring down the tax rate because they get unhappy with us. Let's end the turn. And then we're going to take this bonus diplomat. We're going to send him over to speak with the Gauls. We're going to take this starting diplomat and send him south to talk to the Carthaginians. Let's go ahead and end the turn again. Then we're going to speak to the Gauls. And we're going to offer them, first off, a little little bonus. We're going to give them a thousand dollar gift. Then we're going to give them map information and trade rights. Then we're going to make a little ask of them. We're going to ask for just Mediolanium. Later we'll buy all these cities, but for now we just want Mediolanium. We're going to offer them a thousand denarii a turn for 19 turns. And then we're going to go over to Mediolanium. We're going to go ahead and build another diplomat. Followed by some just town militia to discourage anyone from attacking us. And let's go ahead and end the turn. And the reason that we wanted this diplomat in Mediolanium is because this diplomat will go north and speak to the Germanians. That's the reason we bought Mediolanium. So go north, speak to the Germanians. We're going to accept any, you know, trade rights, that kind of stuff from random people. That's fine. And the turn one more time. And let's see if we can reach the Germanians this turn. I don't think so. Yeah, next turn we'll get them. And we're going to go ahead and start all of the huge trades. We're going to do 10,000 denarii a turn for 19 turns in exchange for 
all of their cities. And they accept. Then we're going to go over, speak to the Gauls again. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to change the tribute to really, really high. We're going to give it to them for 19 turns in exchange for all of their regions. They accept as well. Then we're going to go over to the Carthaginians. We're going to do the same thing. Make them all grand offers that we cannot possibly honor. And we're going to demand all of their regions as well. And they accept as well. So, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty crazy uh, empire. We start with 21 regions. It's spanning across all of Germany, down to Italy, down to Sicily. We have one in North Africa. We have Carolus. We have Palma. So this is pretty incredible. You could probably do the same thing down here with the Numidians, but uh, just for the sake of this video not being a million years, I figured I would just do the short version. Um, let's take a look at the economy. So we're projected to lose 40,000 denarii because we haven't canceled this tribute yet. But now let's go ahead and cancel the tribute with everyone. Cancel it with the Germans and cancel it with the Gauls. And uh, now we don't owe anyone any money and we are actually going to profit 12,000 denarii a turn with our 21 regions. So yeah, this is a very different kind of start to the campaign than you're used to with Spain. <laughs> um, now, if you're not careful, if you don't do anything, you're just going to end up losing a bunch of these cities because you're totally spread out like this. But if you actually you know, made an effort to keep these cities, you would probably be able to. Um, and even if you lose a couple of them, still are just so powerful. So let's take a look at, yeah, we're besieged everywhere. But you're gonna get a ton of candidates for adoption, of course, because you're such a big uh, faction right now. You get largest faction, most advanced faction. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, financial estimates for next turn, another 12,000 next turn, so that's good. <laughs> let's look at the faction rankings. We'll switch to all factions. We are by far the best financial ranking. Territorial, we just skyrocketed and everyone else just plummeted, so. A pretty overpowered start to the campaign try it out it's fun you don't have to play like this but this should work on any difficulty you could have a proper empire in the first like 10 turns here but <laughs> so that's an alternative start to spain's campaign so let's take a look at spain's army composition and it's grim right off the bat because these two are generals this is onagers which you cannot build this is just not real and this is mercenaries which you also cannot build so that's also not real um, your peasants are horrible, your town militia are horrible, your Iberian infantry are worth mentioning because they have attack of 7 and defense of 8, but in the actual campaign they're really bad. They break all the time on high difficulties. So you're not going to get a decent unit until past year. So you end up with really 8 units that you can actually train and use and that are decent. And that includes war dogs, so <laughs> it's grim. Um, but let's take a look at the first one, Scutarii. This is with the Hall of Heroes, which is a pretty late technological advancement as Spain, but it's your first decent unit, so yeah. Um, they have attack of 9, missile attack of 13, and defense of 12. These are kind of like Hastati or Principes because they have javelins, but they're honestly better. Um, they have higher attack, higher missile attack, slightly lower defense, but higher charge bonus. So compare this to the comparable Principes. Lower attack of 7, lower missile attack of 11, lower charge bonus of 2, but obviously much higher defense. The Romans have the best armor in the game, um, so they beat out these Scutarii on that. But I think they're roughly comparable. On you know medium difficulty, you're going to find that they're roughly equal to Principes. So honestly, this is a really good early game unit if you can get it early enough to use it. But it will struggle against the kind of post marian type stuff, so that's when you'll want to transition to more of the heavy infantry and the cavalry type armies. Next up, let's take a look at the religious units, the Naked Fanatics and Bull Warriors. Both of these units can be trained from level 2 and level 3 of the Sacred Shrine of Isis, respectively, and they both take two turns to train per unit, which is really unfortunate. But Naked Fanatics have Attack of 13, Defense of 7, Charge of 5, and Good Morale, Good Stamina. So they're really good, especially if they use Warcry. They have Attack of 23 with a Charge Bonus of 5 for 30 seconds. So that's really powerful, but they have zero armor. 
So they're very flimsy if you fire any arrows at them or charge them with cavalry. They can break pretty easily, so you just have to use them intelligently. Next up, Bull Warriors. These are incredible. Some of the best infantry in the game. Attack of 13, missile attack of 17. These are better stats than even Praetorian Cohort. Um, it, you don't beat out the attack stat of Bull Warriors until you get to Urban Cohort. But they have defense of 12, which is slightly lower than comparable Roman troops. Even basic Astati have better defense than Bull Warriors at defense of 14. But of course, you have two hit points as Bull Warriors. So these are great for pushing towers because they'll take very little damage from the arrows from the towers. They're great for fighting on walls because they have those two hit points. They're a good front line in battles uh, because they have those javelins. But the downside of Bull Warriors is that they're extremely expensive to train. 1,150 denarii to train and they take two turns to train. So they're really, really expensive to build but their upkeep is very low. So once you've built them, they're really, really good units, but if you use them as your entire army, you're gonna take a lot of time and money retraining them between battles, and it's gonna destroy your economy, which is basically what happened in like parts six to nine of my campaign where I played as Spain. I just built too many bull warriors and ruined the economy. Next up is missile troops. We have slingers, which are pretty bad. Uh, these are from actually your highest level of archery range. Missile attack of four. <sighs> they're better than skirmishers slightly, but they're really bad, uh, especially compared to Balearic slingers, which are the long range version. They have missile attack of nine and they're armor piercing. These are actually really good. These are like the Cretan archers of slingers. So when you can buy these, um, just mercenaries in the field, you should, because they are much better than Slingers. If you bring Slingers into battle, you're going to have issues. Slingers are really only good for leaving on the walls once you pick up some stone walls. I actually do use them for that, but they're just not that good. So as Spain, you definitely want to pick up Alaric Slingers and eventually Cretan Archers, because you need good missile troops when you're playing as Spain. Skirmishers, I don't really need to mention them. They're not that good except when you are dealing with Carthaginian elephants. They will be very useful in that case. Um, but other than that, they're not that good. Warhounds, you know, I don't really need to talk about them. But round shield cavalry and long shield cavalry. So the cavalry of Spain ends up being the backbone of the mid to late game armies. Just because once you have a full stack army of long shield cavalry, you'll kind of be able to just morale shock any army and kind of just win. So they're good. They're not great. Um, attack of eight, defense of 13, charge of six. But they have good morale, they're fast moving. They're good light cavalry. If you use them, um, they'll be at least half of your army for most of the game. But some people actually prefer to use round shield cavalry because they're faster. They're kind of similar strength, similar stats. They're just, they don't have as good morale. So I end up preferring long shield cavalry. Um, but yeah, you're going to use a lot of cavalry just because you need to. But overall, the Spanish army, it's just very non-diverse. If you take a look at a similar faction, the Gauls, they have druids, they have warband, which are spearmen, they have naked fanatics too, but they also have swordsmen, and then they have chosen swordsmen, which are incredible heavy infantry. They have not only skirmishers, but long-range archers. They have heavy cavalry. I don't know, it's, it's a lot easier to play as Gaul just because you can build a really great army of chosen swordsmen and forest or warband. And it's, I mean, it's really hard to beat. And then you get the Druids with the bonus to morale and you can make some strong armies. But with Spain, you really need to be smart about your units and how you use them. You need to build good armies with kind of some bull warriors, some naked fanatics, some scutari, some cavalry, and some slingers. You need to be careful with them, especially on high difficulty. Because Spain's just, a hard faction to play as. <laughs> it never gets easy, really. Um, but it's really fun. I really recommend you play it. So I hope I've given you some tips and tricks for how to have more fun and be more successful as Spain. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.